Anderson Windows. It's March Madness right here on WPRI TV Channel 12. In. Two more games about to begin. First, we're going to send you all out to Cal, North Carolina and Syracuse. Those of you expecting Chattanooga Providence, we'll get you that game at 10:24. First, you're going to go out to Syracuse in the east, and we'll send you out to Gus Johnson after this. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is there in Birmingham. Chattanooga and Providence, a 14 seed and a 10 seed in our Cinderella game of the evening. When we come back, you'll be at courtside with Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Craig James after this. So Arizona on Sunday will take on the winner. This game between the Friars and the Mocks of Chattanooga. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, a little drained after that. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable first game here. We're expecting another one here in the, in the nightcap. Uh, Sweet 16 nightcap. Let's talk about this game. Uh, what do you see off the start? Well, Jim, I think you pointed out something that's very important here, and I think we go back to the beginning of this tournament. And I said, after the first round, anybody will be able to beat their next opponent. And that's what we're going to look at right here tonight. Both of these ball clubs feel they're going to win this basketball game. I'd have to say, if you look at the schedule, you look at the, the quality of the teams they've played, Providence would have to be favored. But you can't explain that to the Mox. How improbable is this matchup? There's never been a Sweet 16 game that pitted seeds uh, that were this low in the tournament. You add them up, uh, Chattanooga 14, Providence a 10, that's 24. Cleveland State and Navy, the other one, they had the record and, prior to this, Billy. And no 14 team has ever won this game. Cleveland State lost that game to Navy by one. Here are the lineups. The Mocs with the Southern Conference Player of the Year, Johnny Taylor, with Isaac Connor, Chris Mims, Willie Young, Wes Moore. Mac McCarthy in his 12th year. He is tied for the most wins in Southern Conference history. He can get the record tonight and move to the final eight. And as this game progresses, we'll explain to people what the Southern Conference history is all about. It'll be a lot different than what people think. Pete Gillen's third year at Providence. He's pulled off many upsets in his career at both Providence and Xavier. Austin Crozier was the tournament's top scorer through the first two rounds. 60 points in two games with Derek Brown, who had 33 against Duke. Garces, Thomas, and Sham God. So Chattanooga, the 14 seed in the blue uniform, the dark unis, Providence controls the tip. And if you want to look at a key stat, Providence gets out-rebounded by opponents. The Mox control their opponents on the board, 7-3 advantage. Let's see if that means anything based on conference schedule. Providence team that was 23 and 11 on the year. While Chattanooga is 24 and 10 after a 5 and 7 start. Champ got given an alley, dishes for two. So Derek Brown, fresh off 33 against Duke. Scores the first two of this game. Derek Brown is one of those tweeners. He's not a guard, he's not a forward. Very difficult to match up with. And he's playing another guy that's a tweener, Willie Young, that's tough to match up with. Johnny Taylor draws the foul on Chamgod. So Johnny Taylor, the conference player of the year, his coach says that he is spectacular in the open floor and some impact player. Ninth all-time at the school, led the team in scoring. He's had some big games at the free throw line, Billy. He had a game against Georgia Southern this year where he was 17 of 18 at the line. Knows how to draw the foul in the act of shooting. It's a new record at the school. And I think a really tough matchup if you're looking early on in this ball, ball game for Garces to go ahead and have to guard Taylor, who's got some quickness on him, and may be able to take him outside. He's only shooting 29% from three, and I don't mean outside from three-point range. And there's Brown again. He is just having a sensational tournament. Providence with wins against Marquette and Duke. Upsetting them both. The Duke one uh, particularly interesting with the win coming in Charlotte. Garces, soft hook, 4 nothing. 
And now we see the matchup on the other end, Taylor having to go against the power of Garces. Chattanooga with upset specials over Georgia, which was the three seed in this region, and also the six seed Illinois. So they've knocked out an SEC and a Big Ten team. They'd like to knock out the Big East tonight out of this tournament. Providence the last hope for the Big East. On the switch, ground now on Moore. Moore staying away from the ball. He's their primary assist man. Mims. Officials missed that. Crocher knocked Mims to the floor. Off the Friars. Chattanooga on February the 10th let the world know they don't want to be known any longer as UTC or Tennessee Chattanooga. It's just Chattanooga. Well, they've changed the logo. They've changed the mascot. Great leader by Connor. And Connor changes the scoreboard to register the first two for the box. Jam God for two more for he Providence. Just, he just overpowered Moore. A great story in college basketball as Moore walked on last year for the Mox, and by October 15th, it didn't take but a couple of days to show that he meant that he was going to be a star. Oh, what an assist to Johnny Taylor from Westmore. Jim, there was no way for Taylor to catch that ball, much less put it away. Watch this back screen, but Crozier was waiting for him. Crozier is six foot ten. Moore not only caught it, but finished it. So Taylor, there was a back screen on Garces, but that wasn't the point. The point was Crochure was waiting for the lob. Taylor now 0-3 from the free throw line. Last touched by Jamel Thomas. Johnny Taylor, a 68% free throw shooter, 0 for 3 in this one. But a break for the mocks, the ball bouncing off Thomas. And out of bounds, so Chattanooga. Thomas posted up on Garcia again. I don't think that that would be his strength. If he can face up, he can use his quickness. Taylor knocks it out of bounds. Taylor, not the best outside shooter, Billy. No, he isn't. As I said, he's shooting under 30% for three, but I don't mean going out and shooting three-point shots. I'm talking about them getting 15, 18 feet away and facing up on Garces. Here's Crozier giving it up to Garces. Crozier tips it over, but no teammate in the area. Providence out of the Big East. Got an at-large bid, one of the last bids to be extended in this tournament meriting a number 10 seed twice the school has been to the final four 1973 with Ernie De Gregorio and company and 1987 under the direction of Rick Pitino Young misfiring on a three but Taylor gets it back Young again rattles out and Brown secures it two good looks by Young Sham God not getting out defensively and Jim, that Providence run to the Final Four with Billy Donovan and company and Rick Pitino started right here on this floor. Rozier missing his first shot of the night. Connor races it down. There's Taylor with the three. Off the mark early, although he has four points. One on a jam. Both teams settling in. They really don't have a flow for how they want to play this game. Here's Garces just knocking Thomas out of the way. Good defensive play. Jam God taking it all the way and rattles out. It'll go to the line for two. Foul on Moore. Quite a bit of difference in the athleticism of Sham God and Moore. And he can feel it right away. He's taking his power and going right by Moore. Jason Murdoch comes in for Providence. He was a starter as a sophomore and Part-time also starter. The other points of his career. His cousin, Eric Murdoch. Great player at Providence. Yeah, number two all-time scorer at Providence. Cam got to shoot two. These two schools have never met before. A 66% free throw shooter. 
7-4 Friars. First time tonight, little full court pressure. Nice job by Murdoch coming over the double team. Providence chasing. In they go to Mims. Off balance and count it. And there's the man that really put the mocks into the NCAA tournament. Had he not made the tip in in Greensboro, North Carolina for the Southern Conference Championship, they would not be here. A nice leaner. Hey, he hit that game winner against Marshall in the final. That was on Crozier, and Crozier with an early second personal. So he'll come out, and he's replaced by Thomas. Jim, these two teams have one common opponent, and that's Canisius. Providence finished, them off, finished off Canisius 80-53. to Chattanooga lost to Canisius 49-63. Quite a differential there, but from, the time, from that time, Chattanooga has changed her entire style of play. Under 16 timeout, game tied at 7. Chattanooga and Providence tied. The Big East got four bids, four spots in this tournament. The 97 edition, after advancing eight teams to the final four in the 80s, only one in the 90s. Syracuse last year, Billy. And Jimmy, you talk about upsets in this tournament, as we just saw before. Of course, Chattanooga opened up with a 15-0 run on Georgia. That's probably, what, as far as uh, upsets in this tournament, got to be one of the biggest. Connor... Off the miss of Brown, game tied, seven up. Moore hiding out in the left corner. Jumper drops by Taylor, give him the lead. And there's exactly what I was talking about, Jim. At about 15 feet, he has the advantage over Garces. He can pull him out there and then go by him. A lot better than playing in the low post, and as you pointed out, he's not a great three-point shooter, but for mid-range, he's got the advantage. The Mox with their first lead. Sham got big step to the hole to tie it. He is overpowering the Chattanooga guards, whether it be Moore or Young. And you have a sense that he feels this. Taylor right between the double team. Good pass, Mims. And right now, with Potter and Moore and Young in the ball game, Chattanooga has terrific ball handling. Three guards set. And you see they switched Moore off of Sham God because he was just going right by people. See this? Spinning away in his pass. He had the layup. Tried to make too big a play. Yeah, tried to go with the dipsy do and didn't do it. I think we're going to see Sham God, however, Jim realizing early that he can take anybody that's gardening. Taylor trying to challenge Garces. Yep. He doesn't want to have to power with Garces down inside. Mims working hard to get open. Too strong. Murdoch with a quick outlet. From the corner. Was Thomas and Mims. He does a good job inside. Buzz Peterson, who's a coach in that conference, the former Carolina player, said Mims is one of the hardest working players you'll ever see. Well, he's shooting 66% from the floor, which is a new season field goal record. Taylor, three. He's got one of those yep. side spins on it. Yeah, when he steps out beyond the three-point line, he takes away his advantage. And he is catching it from Mac McCarthy saying, get that ball inside. So Mims with his first personal. And Jim, we talk about players on certain courts. Mac McCarthy can stand on this floor and think back of his days as an assistant at Auburn, where Auburn made that incredible four-day run to win the SEC and then come back in the NCAA tournament and right off a loss here against North Carolina, he had an opportunity to go ahead and get this job at uh, what was then UT Chattanooga. Rozier to the line for two. Rozier took Collier right away. Good help on the weak side by Taylor. Rozier. 39 points against Marquette and inside of that statistic he was 15 of 15 at the free throw line which was just one off the NCAA tournament record 
of a perfect 16 of 16, and here he misses this one. Jimmy's shooting 90% from the free throw line. You got to go back to think about big guys that shoot from the free throw line, the Larry Birds, the Christian Leitners, but 90% on the year. How about that technique? It's like you draw it up. The 16 of 16 tournament record shared by Bill Bradley and Finnis Dimbo. I didn't realize Dimbo was that kind of free throw shooter. I didn't either. The Senator was one of the all-time great pure shooters. That was off of Wright, who just entered the game. Corey Wright, 5'8 guard out of New York. And created havoc against Duke University when Pete Gillen went to the small backcourt. Six on the shot clock. Young puts it up. Phillips battling for it, and Murdoch comes away. It's a tough break for Young because he lost the ball. There goes Shank out again, just exploding by people and can't finish. Missed the chippy. He has got to be getting frustrated, Jimmy. He's just absolutely just blowing by whoever's guarding him and then not finishing. Sometimes trying to get a little too fancy. That time just misjudging the layup. Collier now in the game. Missing the jumper. Jam God over to right. Crozier, he'll take the three. Moore, smart play, tips it over to Taylor. So sure, right now, not getting anything going. Jim, in that game where he scored 39, he made one from 70 feet. But tonight he's 0 for 2. David Phillips has come in for the Mox, number 21. Top right corner. There's Phillips, freshman. No, no whistle. Got fouled on that shot. 11-10, Chattanooga and Crozier to the line for two. Excellent hit ahead by Wright on the play. Grosher really getting up and down the floor, Jim, for a big man. That's kind of interesting. When you watch these matchups, nobody from Chattanooga can handle Shamgod. He's going out of the ballgame right now. But Shamgod cannot handle Young either. Pete Gillum giving him a little rest, letting him settle down emotionally here. Talked about Crozier hitting all 15 attempts against Marquette. He had a one-month stretch during the regular season where he didn't miss a single one. He made 57 in a row, just nine off the Division I mark. And Pete Gillen had to love that. Pete Gillen, not only successful as a college coach, was part of the Dream Team 2 coaching staff up in Toronto. A guy by the name of Rick Majerus also on that staff who's having a pretty good NCAA tournament himself. Sham God with five points. Providence leads by a point. Along with Billy Packer and Craig James, Jim Nance, courtside in Birmingham. We're already tonight, Arizona upset Kansas. Well, how about for the lower seeds in the tournament since 1985? Only two have had uh, the chance to play in the Sweet 16. Chattanooga this year, Cleveland State back in 86. Here you see a half-court 1-3-1 one, one trap. Good job by Young to recognize the defense and not go right into it. Mims has it taken away. That's a Muggsy Bogue steal here. Corey Wright. Wright sits right down. He's so low, you don't anticipate him being there. Brown from the corner for three. God salute, and that puts them up four. Brown had 13 against Marquette, and of course the big 33 against Duke. Junior college transfer has been outstanding. Against the zone, Mims doing a nice job coming to the ball. Connor three. Chattanooga's missed its last seven shots. No call. They thought they might have a charge if Murdoch converts. Well, what happened there, Jim, is Young misjudged. You know, one of the things, if you're small, you're quick. And Wright is extremely quick. He stopped on a dime, and Young anticipated he'd have to run through him. Good job by Wright. An eight-point run for the Friars. Collier inside. Had a 
17-13, Providence. Right running the show with Sham God on the bench. We talked about Chattanooga changing their style of play. They tried to start the year in a run-shoot mode, and after Christmas decided, there's a great touch by Crozier. After Christmas decided they're going to be a half-court team. Thirteen. That was a two-point basket by Crozier. 9.25 to go first half. Now, in a 1-3-1 one, one trap like this, pounding in and hit to the opposite side should open up a three. Connor gets out of the double team, and Collier gets it to go. Crozier did a heck of a job getting out of the way there. He, wasn't, he knew he wasn't in, in time to draw the charge. Driving. Again, no charge. Mims thought he might have it. Collier's really been doing a good job off the bench on the boards. As I Phillips. Phillips, the freshman, cuts it to two. Yeah, Billy Collier's come in with four points off the bench. Against Illinois, he had 12.6 rebounds, picking up right where he left off in that game. Over the top, and Phillips makes the steal. No, he had a foot on the line. Jam God returns. Garces also. Jim Phillips, just a freshman, was recruited slightly by Louisville. Most of these guys are junior college transfers or walkouts, not big recruits. Got a 20-second timeout called by Providence. The first number one seed to be eliminated was the most unlikely one of all to lose a game in this tournament, Kansas. And we were talking about upsets. You said a minute ago that Chattanooga's upset of uh, Georgia might be the biggest, or Coppin State over South Carolina. But yeah. I still think that with Kansas, mighty Kansas going out in the Sweet 16, who would have ever forecast that? Well, that's been, uh, again, one of the major themes of this NCAA tournament that makes it so special, the unpredictable. Here's Sham God now with Connor on him. Notice how he just blows by no matter what the defender is in this game. He's too quick and strong for him. Six on the shot clock. There he goes again. Sham God dishes to Garces, who draws the foul. Sham God can really... But switch gears and switch direction in a hurry. And Jim, he's got a body on him that even if you defend and try to go ahead and touch him a little bit with your body, he just he's just too strong. And he's got to recognize right now what he's got available for him tonight, and he can he can have a huge evening. A starter at the point for Chattanooga returns, Wes Moore. That foul was on Phillips. So Garces at the line. Billy has only made 31 of 76 on the season. That's 41 percent. And you ought to tell you by that number that he really doesn't go to the offensive glass that much and doesn't draw fouls when he's in there. You would think your postman and a would be over 100. Yeah, it's yeah. 34 games to this point. He's averaging about two attempts a game. That's all. Now he should be shooting over 100 free throws. And 20 to 17. Full court pressure. Chattanooga with a good job of breaking the pressure. No goaltend. Ball is still on the way up, they rule. Right to a corner. Champ got. Brown off balance. Brown a lot like Dickerson in the first game. Tough to guard because he's got that intermediate game, the 15-foot jump shot. Double down by Crozier. And Garces, somebody's got to be open. A little bit slow on rotating the ball so Providence can readjust. Seven on the shot clock. Moore penetrates. Into the arms of Mims. And Garces called on the foul. Now, Jim, I said before this game, even though they're not big, 
and maybe the Southern Conference isn't the Big East or the Big Ten. They have a 7.3 rebound advantage, and you saw why. Everybody goes hard to the boards. Moore did a good job keeping it alive on that last occasion. So the Nibs will shoot two. Billy, what conference has the best uh, win percentage in this tournament now? Oh, without question, the Pac-10. Actually, it's the Southern Conference. Oh, well, two and oh. <laughs> yeah. Multiple teams. I had to get you on that one. That's a trick question. <laughs> uh, the Pac-10, though, with three teams still alive, two in the Elite Eight, UCLA well, and Arizona. Okay, wise guy, I'm going to talk about some teams from the Southern Conference. Kentucky, West Virginia, North Carolina State, Duke, and Davidson. Huh? That conference was the beginning of basketball in the South. It's got some kind of history. The under-eight timeout. Be right back. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Chattanooga Providence, a two-point game. Providence leads. Let's look in on North Carolina and Cal. Out in Syracuse, just coming out of a timeout, North Carolina leads 23 to 19. Vince Carter did start. He's got seven points so far. Well, what, what Cal was, to get back into the game, Pat, Cal was down 19-10, and then they took away Carolina's transition basket. Carolina's zone is causing Cal a lot of problems, and Randy Duck has zip, zero points. He's having a hard time shooting over those tall Carolina guys on the wing. Yeah, both teams, um, Carolina made a few three-point shots early, but both teams have played effective zone defense, and it's going to come down to this kind of stuff, perimeter shots. And that hit a wind draft, because that didn't get any iron. Cal's starting guards uh, scored 13 zip. Can't give him two looks, though, can you, Coach? No, you can't give that guy two looks. And I think the other thing is Cal, Cal's not aware. Until you play against him, you don't know how big Zwicker is. So some of the inside shots that Cal was getting, uh, Zwicker is being, a, uh, is being really tough on them to score inside. And, they, and they're playing uh, with uh, Zwicker up high in the zone. And what he does when the ball swings back to the top of the circle, he comes up and he's an awful difficult target to shoot over top of. Carolina has had five points in the last eight minutes and they lead by five and we'll keep you up to date on this game as one of our late games here on CBS. The Pac-10 team playing here on Friday night. George Radley's been waving that flag all night. In front of us. <laughs> well, Cal's kids have been really tough. Uh, Pat, because they could have been blown out of here. Carolina started the game in just great fashion. And they lead by seven. Let's go back to Birmingham. Court side, Providence leads 22-18 now. Let's go back to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Jim? All right, thank you, fellas. We'll look forward to seeing you at halftime as well. Here, Crozier hit a shot in the lane, and Garces has converted the first to two free throws. So 23 to 18, Friars. And Jim, on that last occasion, the Mox went into a zone for the first time, realizing this penetration that uh, Providence has been getting is causing problems. Let's see if they stay in it or go back to their man-to-man. -man. Back to man-to-man -man now. 6.30 remaining in the first half. the jumper a two <laughs> hadn't been able to make any uncontested layups and then hits a fadeaway jump <laughs> largest lead of the night seven point advantage Connor traveled good job and a smart play by sham god because he anticipated the pass was going to be thrown to the left took away the passing angle and there's no place to go only the fourth turnover of this game three of them by the mox only one by providence You've got more the primary ball handler, 124 assists, only 28 turnovers. Injai missed the jumper and foul called against Garces. So they bring in a seven-footer off the bench at Providence, number 34. Garces has his second personal. Dongo Injai, the 7-1 freshman from Senegal, in for Providence. Collier will test him with the hook. Garces pulls it down. Those are powerful rebounds by Garces. Brown goes outside. A three wide. Taylor, nice save. Young ahead. What's keeping 
Chattanooga in the game with the bad shot selection by Providence. Brown made the, took that last one, which is a good example. You don't get any offensive rebounds, you take bad shots. So with an assist from Pete Gillen, the officials rule that the ball is out of bounds and it belongs to Providence. Two breaks on that one for Providence, getting the ball out of bounds and getting Crozier back in the ball game. Crozier with seven points. 33% for the Mox. When they shoot 50% or better under Coach McCarthy, they have some kind of record. 50 and one. 93 and one. 93 and one. The only time they lost shooting 50% in the 12 years under McCarthy was a game against the Michigan Wolverines. They've been over 50% in the win against in the wins against Georgia and Illinois in this tournament. Mims, nice job. You know, Mims is in that tough position to guard right there. Grosher doesn't come out and get him, so instead of taking the jumper, he took it to the defense, makes a 15-footer. Smart play. Garces no look that worked last week. You see again, Jim, when you take bad shots, there's nobody ready to rebound. Thomas had that brilliant assist to Brown in the win against Duke. There's the double down by Grosher. Pass should be opposite here to Connor, who was wide open, but Taylor just held the ball too long. 4-17 remaining first half. Chattanooga trailing by five. Taylor with four points. And they were the first four points of the night for the box. Nothing since then. He keeps trying to post up on Garces down inside, and Garces is too strong for him in there. There's where he can do well, and great steal. Thomas reached in, and a tie-up arrow still belongs to the box. Jimmy, you mentioned, and we talked about right here in Birmingham where that club in 87 with Billy Donovan played so well. Donovan, Steve Wright, Delray Brooks, Ernie Lewis. They beat UAB to Austin P, Louisville. Then that great upset of Georgetown, their nemesis from the Big East, and got knocked off by Syracuse in the final four. Five on the shot clock. Long. Connor gets it, though. Mims over Crozier and Garces underneath. Providence had not won a tournament game, Billy, since that 87 team. They would have won the Big East to get knocked out in the first round in the NCAA tournament. And Matt McCarthy really upset with his ball club. Actually, he's shouting out there, and the reason that he got that opportunity when he was at Auburn is Sonny Smith had laryngitis, so he got a chance to coach the Auburn club. And has been so successful at Chattanooga. Louisville came from uh, behind, trailed big early to Texas, but then put him away by 15. And will play the winner of Carolina, California, with Carolina up late first half. I don't know, you know, Denny Crum has won multiple national championships, been to the Final Four numerous occasions, but to hear him say, this is the worst shooting team I've ever had, just think of what a great job he's done with Louisville this year. He got one of the gutsiest players in college game, Dewan Week, playing with injury. Taylor drops it, plus one. Every time Taylor takes the ball, at the 18-foot mark and then makes his move, he's been effective. When he sits down in the low post, Garces has too much power on him, but when he goes from 18 feet on into 12 or 15, 15 to 12, he's been really effective. The foul was the first on Thomas, and Taylor 0 for 3 from the line. Get up! Now 0 for 4. He's had 34 on two occasions this year. Chattanooga there for the rebound. 25-22. Again, when you look at Providence Club, they never take shots where they have somebody in to rebound. So they're getting killed off the boards, even though they're a bigger team. 
technical, technical called on both Double. sides. Double technical. Called on Murdoch of Providence and Connor of Chattanooga. I really like that, though, Jim. You know, where officials take control, penalize both guys, set the stage for the game. You're not going to put up with any more of that. They'll not shoot the free throws. Where's the arrow? The arrow belongs to Providence. So they lose possession. Mims leads all scores with eight, but Providence leads the game by three. We'll be right back. We see Connor and Murdoch right here. Now watch what happens, the altercation between the two. There's a push. No, I'm going to retaliate. There's another push. Now watch what happens right here. Excellent piece of officiating. Comes right in and said, nope, we got the technical foul on both of you guys. We're not going to have any of that. Good piece of officiating. Sets the stage for the game. Providence inbounding. So a technical call on each player and a personal on Connor and Murdoch. Providence gets possession because they, the arrow belonged to Providence. Bad pass by Thomas. Mims to Moore, and the Mox with a three can tie it. Crozier had excellent offensive position down low. The pass just not there. the Mims. Sailor missing inside, but gets it back. With just a moment, mocks ball. 25-22, Providence. The Friars' largest lead was seven at 25-18. to 18. Just 2.14 to go in the, in the first half. Jim Moore taking the ball out of bounds this year at a 4.8 to 1 assist turnover ratio. <laughs> you notice he, he is uh, very judicious with the ball. Doesn't try to explode, but just doesn't make mistakes either. How about this, Billy? He's caught right now with a 5. He had 17 games this year <laughs> without, <laughs> without an, a yeah. turnover. Without one turnover. Your starting point guard. I mean, that's unheard of. Yep. And here he is now with a little mismatch with Brown. See if he tries to take it. Yeah, that could be a record. No way of tracking it, but I'll tell you, that might be an all-time Division I record. Mims. And Garces comes out swinging the elbow yeah. to the rebound. And with those biceps, nobody got yeah. in the way. Nice Rose. job by Mims. Good defense. Austin Crozier, the leading scorer in the tournament through the first weekend with 60 points. Shoots the three, now has 10 tonight. Now, Jim, not only does Crozier have a great touch, but he has something that's very difficult to do, and that is he's got such a quick release. Doesn't need to gather himself to shoot. Young gives it up to Mims. Garces blocked it. And jump ball, they say. The arrow belongs to Chattanooga. You don't see that call often, but it was a good one. The backcourt scoring in this game. Providence with nine points. No scoring at all out of the Chattanooga backcourt. And just think of Providence with nine points. Shamgod had three uncontested layups that he didn't put away. So Billy Hutchins sits. Connor returns. A minute 15 to go, first half. Taylor, the conference player of the year of the Southern Conference. Now has eight. Good elevation by Taylor on that play. 28-24 Providence. Swatted away by Mims. Saved by Murdoch. Sham guy driving to the corner. Brown delivers three. No. Pushed by Garson. They got him too. And Garces turns to the other referee and saying, hey, you were right there and you didn't see it. But that was without question a foul. And that's the third on Garces. Here is that block by Mims. How about that timing, Jim? Ball on the way up. Mims came all the way across the lane. He's really the glue on this basketball team. It'll be a one and one at the other end for Johnny Taylor, who is 0 for 4 tonight from the free throw line. Crozier, after a brief rest, comes back. Yeah, Taylor really struggling here at the 
free throw line. He put so much rotation on his last one, trying to change his style after like, three other unsuccessful bids. Well, Coach McCarthy changed the style of the team in midseason, but it's a little late to change style of your foul shot. 0 for 5. He's 68%. Yep. Better than that on the season. There's Roger. that great release. Yep. We're talking about one of the quickest releases that I've seen for a big man in college basketball. Great touch. 25 seconds to go in the half, and Providence has matched its largest lead. Going to play for one. Keeping the ball out of Moore's hands, Young doing most of the work. Primarily because Young is a finisher, not just a, not just a passer. Moore to the baseline, Mitch, too strong. Young, oh, no, not this time. At the end of the first half, the end of the first half with the score. Providence 31, Chattanooga 24. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Mac McCarthy's mocks trail by seven and the coach had a chance to visit with our Craig James. Coach, re rebounding wasn't a problem for you. Like, no, offensively, you get within 10 feet, the bucket closed up, y'all pressing. We did a great job uh, of keeping them to one shot. We did a great job of getting offensive rebounds, but we didn't convert any. We had 10 offensive rebounds, got no points out of it, and probably just seven layups and six free throws. Make layups, make half the layups and half the free throws, and we're comfortably ahead. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thanks, man. A near steal, but Crozier left open. You can't do that. And he's hit three threes in the last minute on the game clock when you go back to the first half. And look at the pressure defense here. One, two, two, full court press. Nice job, a little change up there by Pete Gillen. Then drops back into his man-to-man. -man. And Jim Crozier shoots three-pointers like layups. I mean, is that a beautiful stroke he's got on the shot or not? It's effortless. Inside, Taylor with two. Taylor with ten points. Crozier was the number one free throw shooter in the Big East this year. He walked on that play. A little bit out of sync. Also first team, all Big Ten. I mean Big East, excuse me. And he probably could have been first team all Big Ten. I just moved him out of the he's, he's that good. I'd go ahead and put him on both uh, all-conference teams. Yeah, without question. You heard Coach McCarthy talk about missing inside shots and free throws, and I don't mean to overemphasize this, but Taylor in the first half was 0 for 5 from the line, including two front ends of 1 and 1s. That could have been conceivable uh, you know, seven points there. They were down seven at halftime. And Jim, remember that stat shooting over 50% for the mocks? They were only shooting 31% in the first half. And there's a turnover. That one... The fifth of the game, and it should be credited to Moore. Taylor was led too much. And again, though, Taylor trying to go down in low. Garces has too much strength for him down there. They give it to Moore, his first turnover of the game. And now Mims out there, and Crozier just goes right by him. And one. Would like to guard him down in the low post, but that was a terrific crossover by Crozier. Now he's hitting him from the outside, so he forces you to come up tight to guard him. Pulls that ball across his chest beautifully there and makes the drive on the baseline. Second foul on Mims. You know, Crozier's the one who hit that 70 foot heave at halftime against Marquette. He said afterwards that that was the first time he'd ever tried it. He says, You know, these guys in practice who are always practicing half court shots. I think it's a total waste of time. How about this, though? The 90% free throw shooter misses one. Good passing. Taylor missing inside, and Providence comes out with it. Sham God, that's a travel. That he said that instead of practicing those half-court shots, he said, I'd rather spend that time practicing 10 free throws. Well, he doesn't have this great pure shot from not working on it. They talk about his work ethic and his shooting. 
hours upon hours in the summer. Good hit ahead right there. Can he convert? Finally. This time with Mims. Nice job by Young. 36-28. Cam God driving to nowhere. He can get past oh. the mox, it seems like, anytime he wants. That was the best look that Brown has had in a while. But it's amazing how this team gets no offensive rebounds. And that's poor shot selection, yep. isn't it? Brown's two out of ten for the game. Taylor will get to try the free throw line two more times. And every time Taylor takes Garces outside and then goes by him, he gains the advantage. Garces with his fourth, Billy, so there's a little boost perhaps for the mocks as Garces will have to go out Murdoch replaces him. Well, you look at all the different ways that college coaches put together teams. Mac McCarthy put this one together primarily with walk-ons, not highly recruited players, and then junior college players, of course, which Johnny Taylor was one, played with Indian Hills in Iowa. They were the third ranked junior college team in the country. And he's having his problems from the line, huh? Well, he finally got one, one of six First one of the night. Can't have it. One for seven from the line. That could put them right in this ball. Two one and yep. ones. 36-29. Providence. Beautiful pass. And Brown converts. He has seven. Coming off the 33 against Duke. Boy, that was some catch that time by Brown because you couldn't expect that ball to be thrown when it was. Connor, three. 38 32. That was a big one. Largest lead was 10. That was just a few moments ago. It's down to six. Crozier over Mims, all, profit, all Chattanooga underneath. Good defense by Mims that time. He did not go for the pump fake. I really think the Crozier wanted to go by him. Good Mims working. Kicks it out, Young three, and he finally hits. He was 0 for 7 before that shot. A three-pointer to cut it to three. Timeout, Providence. A 20. A fall. 16 10 to go in the game. 38 35 Providence. Father Fergus, he's been in the band for a long time at Providence, also the team chaplain. Well, we've got here tonight a lot of the brain trust of the past of Providence. Joe Mullaney's here, Dave Gavitt, Dave, who was at one time the commissioner of the Big East where he had to be neutral. At one time, uh, of course, the head of the NCAA Tournament Committee where he had to be neutral. But tonight he can go back to his Providence roots where he was one of the outstanding coaches in the country. Thomas hits the shot to go up five. And Young misses the short one. Well, he hits his first basket of the night and then misses the short one. Getting a little frustrated. Murdoch, oh, open lane, and he says, wait a minute, what, what are you guys doing here? I'll go ahead and take it. Providence stays in their three-quarter court trapping. Now they just drop back to man-to-man. -to -man. Looking like they want to up-tempo this game a little bit, Jim. And here's where Taylor's been effective. Mims goes off the rim. So out of the timeout, Providence playing smart ball here. Murdoch. Oh! Nice smart play by Brown to not push off. Normally when you're behind a guy rebounding, have a tendency to push. Fire ball. Sham God's amazing in the gym, how he can blow by people and then kick it on out. They're not taking advantage. Arthur 
Providence, the 10th seed in the Southeast, had a 10-point lead in this half. At 36-26, Chattanooga cut it to 38-35. And Pete Gillen said, I've seen enough. He called a timeout. Out of the timeout, Providence with a couple of hoops. To go back to seven in front and looking for more behind Thomas. There, there again, another bad shot. Chris, Chris Mims is taken out. He's a little shaken up, stretching the leg. Collier gave him good minutes in the first half and comes right back in and does the job here. Cuts it to five. Collier was six off the bench tonight. Crozier driving and held in check by Young. The last time a team from the Southern Conference made it to the Elite Eight was back in 1976. It was VMI in 76 that made it to the Elite Eight. One of the assistant coaches on that team was that man, Pete Gillen. Brown short on the three. He's having a tough night from the field. Well, now, wait a minute. The Southern Conference gym has sent some guys to the Final Four. We West Virginia. Preceding that, yeah, 59. But the last time they had one in the last eight was VMI, 76. Foul on Shamgod. The conference is 76 years old. And you look at uh, the well, ACC and the SEC, almost every team went through the Southern Conference at one time. Well, I looked at the guys that made up their all-time team. Frank Selby, Jerry West, Hot Rod Hunley, your friend, Will Hetzel, and Dick Grote, the former... Great two-time All-American from Duke University, so a Hall of Famer or two in there. Two sports star. Right. That's the Pittsburgh Pirates travel on Young. And Frank Selby, Jim, against Newberry, scored 100 points while playing at Furman in the Southern Conference. That's a record that still stands to this day. College record holder in Division I. Conference twice had teams make it to the championship game. North Carolina, that's right, Carolina, 1946. That was with Bones McKinney on that basketball team. Ben Carnival was the coach. Sham got missing. And the other was West Virginia, 59. They made it to the finals, losing the Cal. I've never seen a team be in the lead and take as many ill-advised shots. Well, that three would have cut it to two. Connor just missing. Sham God to the trailer, Thomas. They play like they're on the playground on Sunday afternoon, the last game of the day. <laughs> Just, you know, guys are so, they're, they're taking passes and shots. Like they're 20 points ahead. Yeah, like ahead. they're 20 points ahead in the game, exactly. Just ask Georgia and Illinois, you can't do that against this team. See, there's another example. That was no one, no one and even Pete close Dillon to that. has seen as much as he's seen enough, just as we have. He wants to time out any kind of timeout. Fellas, he's going to say, what are we doing here? Yeah, exactly. This is the NCAA tournament. This team's beaten Georgia. It's beaten Illinois. You're one game away from the last eight. The, the possession of the basketball is so important. Minnesota and UCLA, a one and a two seed, playing for the Midwest Regional Championship tomorrow. Clem Haskins and Steve Lavin, what outstanding jobs they've had this season, done this season. And How Kentucky against Utah, also a one against a two. How about that Utah-Stanford game? Revan Knight ties it up, puts it in overtime. That was some night of basketball last night, and we had one to kick it off here tonight. Wasn't bad either. <laughs> This one, who knows? We could have another one right here with 12.45 remaining. Chattanooga trailing by five. There's right again. So low to the floor. No, no travel call on Crozier, even though he was rolling around. And Taylor ties him up. The mocks get the arrow. Have the arrow. That's about the fourth time tonight where Wright, who is down to the floor so low that somebody puts it on the floor and he gets the second dribble. Jason Murdoch in for Providence. And Jamel Thomas out. Phillips in for the box, number 21. And let's see if that timeout by Pete Gillen will settle his team down into some kind of offensive structure when they go on the other end. And if you're Mac McCarthy standing over there, you've got to like the fact that your team is still within striking distance. 
No longer they can stay in the game. The underdog, in my estimation, the NCAA tournament always has the advantage. They got to change the shot clock. It's on 15. No. They had a tie-up situation, yeah. so. And, and they retained the ball. So Collier guns quickly. Taylor gets the roll, and he can cut it to two at the line. And the difference is offensive rebounding in his basketball game. Providence, almost non-existing, only had two in the first half, getting killed on the boards. And there's Taylor going up strong. And that's on Crozier, Billy, his third. We've got 12 minutes to go. Is Pete Gillen going to let him stay out there? Looks that way. Taylor completes the three-point play, 42-40, full-court pressure. And how do you like this? The pressure that Mac McCarthy said that was kind of interesting to me the other day. It was much easier for us to slow down than if I tried to change things at midstream to speed up. Crozier open three, not this time. And Phillips out battles Brown for the rebound. Phillips has really done a good job off the bench on the boards. Collier to tie it. Collier has been outstanding off the bench. And another timeout by Gillen. This one at 20. This is what he feared. They were just being lulled to sleep. They did not deliver the knockout on Chattanooga. You can almost you can almost feel this coming, Billy. Absolutely. Providence has just been, you know, letting them stay in the game, taking shaky shots and passes, not putting the ball in the hands of the proper people. In the case of Crozier, you have a guy who's having a terrific basketball game. You've got to let him shoot the ball. It has been amazing how they just went to sleep mentally, and it's costing them. And, and you've got to give uh, the mocks a lot of credit, Jim, and the fact that they have stayed with their game plan, executing perfectly. Dead even with 12 minutes remaining. Back from a 10-point deficit, the mocks. Crozier. Jarsis in there with four fouls. And Phillips comes away with the rebound. And how about a chance to take the lead? Taylor. On Garces, blew by, him. by him. Blew by him and went left-handed. Chattanooga has the lead. And the crowd, Jim. Brown, no. See again, Jim, a one-on-one -on -one play, four guys standing and watching. Therefore, there's no offensive rebound opportunity. For this man, Collier dumps it inside, and the steal by Murdoch. Providence has missed its last seven shots, and a whistle before the shot. Foul on Connor. Much as we saw with Brevin Knight last week, Jim Gunn has the opportunity to go by people and create an offense within himself. A timeout on the floor, 18-6 run for Chattanooga. With the Mox leading 44-42, Taylor with 16 points, six rebounds. But shooting 62% in the second half, the Mox. There's Joe Mullaney, you talked about him earlier. Yep, Joe Mullaney, one of the real brilliant basketball minds of all time. 320 wins at Providence. Garces ties it. Whenever they set up in an offensive set that makes some sense, they seem to be able to score. Let's check the defense. A 1-3-1 half-court trap. Phillips in a bind. Breaks out of it. Phillips a little bit shaky right here with his ball handling. Tough time finding a shot with eight on the clock. Connor drives, Collier. Boy, is he having a big game, Jim. Puts it, oh, it rattles out. On the floor, Mims, and one. Offensive rebounding. Collier and Mims have been just sensational.
You know, let's think about something with this team, the big win over Georgia. Here we're going to see this offensive rebounding. Here comes Mims out of nowhere. He picks up the ball again. But you know, with that win over Georgia, Jim, to open up this NCAA tournament, you have a situation where Mac McCarthy is now 7-9 and nine against, NC, against SEC teams. The real headline on that foul, Crozier picked up his fourth. And has to sit. With 10 minutes remaining. Well, Crozier we, with four. Remember in the first game, Pollard picked up that four, and it really hurt Kansas. The guy that got in foul trouble and had to sit down was Keith Van Horn, and the freshman pulled him out. Let's see what happens here. Garces with four also for the Friars. He's in the game. Jam got on the drive, and no whistle. That's it to one. He is so strong. It was pretty effective. A steal by Garces. He'll take it all the way for the lead. Young, young fell down on the... Oh, he's all right. I, looked like he got hurt there, but Garces is limping badly. And there's that 1-3-1 one, one, out for a trap. Pretty effective so far, Jim. Connor, three-pointer. Nims. He, he called the timeout. They grant it to him also at 20. That's a play that this season has become very fashionable. Well, a terrific job on Mims' part. He not only gives you the effort, he's thinking out there. So Mac McCarthy, who replaced Murray Arnold as the head coach at Chattanooga, he had directed the Mox head coach McCarthy to four NCAA tournaments before this year, and they lost in the first round all four times by an average of 27.5 points per loss. Well, you have to talk a little bit about where they were seated, Jim, going up against much superior personnel. Murray Arnold, by the way, an outstanding basketball coach in his own right, now down at Okaloosa, Walton Junior College, where in 1995, he won the National Junior College Tournament. Wow. Still fondly remembered for what he did for the Mox. Now, they haven't been Division I for their history, you know. Chattanooga trailing by one, 8.45 remaining. Taylor lost the handle. Got a break there. Off the Friars. And Garces is limping out there, so Taylor ought to take advantage of it a little bit. Try to continue to beat him with his quickness. Seven on the shot clock. Connor in the lane. Goal pending. No chance to make that block. Makes it 49-48 Mox. You see this kind of trying to block from behind, and there's Garces going up. No question, a ball on the way down. And a heated uh, discussion involving Sham God and Phillips. And Sham God, in the good sign of sportsmanship, goes over, shakes Phillips' hand. Well, you see a lot of that. Even as, as every one of those kids want to win and advance so badly, they can settle down. There's that crossover triple. Sham God draws the foul. Great crossover move. He'll head to the line for a couple. With 8.30 remaining. So many players today are into that low crossover dribble. Hardaway does it so and probably is the guy that set it up better than anybody. But watch this crossover dribble. Just pounds it. The ball really probably isn't off the floor, maybe two inches. So it's impossible to get down there to get a hold of it. And he's so strong when he goes by. Phillips to the bench with four. That ties it. Crozier over there on the sideline, standing up with the four fouls. Realizing he'd like to see them get a lead here so he can come back in at about the five-minute mark. He has been on the bench for a minute and a half on the game clock. And again, the 1-3-1 half-court defense here with Brown outside. Does a good job jumping up in the air, making that pass tough. Collier, oh, too strong. Tough break. 
Good cut to the basket. Boy, spins out. Thomas fouled by Taylor. It is amazing how Providence has settled down, Jim, in the last uh, three or four minutes here, and now seems to be more in sync. They went on for a period of about five minutes when they lost their good control lead, playing like they're on a playground. Johnny Taylor collects his second personal. So Jamel Thomas to shoot two. He broke through in a game this year. 29 points and 15 rebounds against Alaska Fairbanks. Not the toughest competition, but still huge night. Providence in its 13th NCAA tournament with a 13 and 13 record. Something <laughs> has to give. Carolina with two minutes to go and a timeout leads Cal by four up in Syracuse. The winner plays Louisville Sunday for the right to go to the final four. Taylor inside, and that ties it at 51. A terrific play by Connor and Taylor to finish. And, no and notice how Young is backing off a sham got and he, you know, he is so aware of his ability to drive by him that he dropped off and didn't pick him up to inside the top of the key. Sham God recognized it, took the shot. He had a toe on the line, so it's only a two. Wow, oh, is he quick on his feet. Say, so Collier wants it, wants to foul out Garces. But first to three, wildly thrown. Saved by Brown. Here comes Providence with the two-point lead. I'm surprised with Mims and Collier down there and Taylor that the mocks aren't going inside. Cam God dumps it. Garces scores. He's an offense. by four. And Young is giving up so much territory on him, he can get inside the top of the key before he ever has to make his crossover move. Mocks have come back from 10 down in this half. Took a brief lead of three. Little high-low offensive option here. Mims and Collier. Collier working the body again. Too strong. Misses. He missed four layups. Working so hard on the inside. Giving him a big night off the bench. But Jim, plenty of time if you keep going down inside. Something to go happen. Here Coach Jim got again. Thomas three. Got it. They cannot handle Sham God's penetration. Suddenly up seven. And Crozier ready to come back in the game with six minutes to go. I'm kind of surprised that Pete Dillon is doing that because he's got a lead here. A full timeout called by the Mox. Seven unanswered by Providence. The movement front, 58-51. Unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. Two active games underway right now in the Southeast. You're watching Providence. They lead Chattanooga 58 to 51. Meantime, winding down in the East in Syracuse, North Carolina leads Cal 58-54. Let's go courtside. Once again, we reset the game for you. Both teams with 18 fouls. One 20-second timeout remaining for North Carolina. None for Cal. Each team with two full timeouts. And the possession arrow in the favor of the Tar Heels. Ed Cota, the freshman, 72% free throw shooter. Meanwhile, over in Birmingham, Providence, nine points in front of Chattanooga. Kansas already being upset today by Arizona, our first number one seed going out of the tournament. Second shot off the mark, Stewart with the rebound. The things going according to Hoyle, there's never been, all of the number ones have never gotten to the final four, and obviously it's going to happen again this year. 39.2 to go, back in a moment. All right, and let's bring you back to Birmingham now. We'll keep you posted on that. 39 seconds left to the finish of that game. Back to Birmingham, where five minutes and two seconds left. Let's go back to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Jim? 
Well, Pat, while we were away, Jamel Thomas hit another big three to put the Friars up by 10, 61-51. Jim, some great defensive plays inside by Garces. And he really is limping uh, badly on that uh, stress fracture that he has in his foot. But uh, tough kid. He doesn't want to come out of there. Crozier is back in the game with four fouls for the Friars. They picked up ten points on the box with Crozier out. I'm kind of surprised Pete Gillen brought him back in at the five-minute mark because, first of all, they had momentum without him, and secondly, you want him to be down the wire because he's a great free throw shooter. Mims comes out with it. That's Providence's first miss after seven straight connections. Time still left to go inside. The box just can't get one to go in close. Taylor this time. And it's an eight-point game with 4.30 remaining. Mims and Taylor and Collier, who uh, is now on the bench, really doing a job. And, and look at what it's going to be, a little four corners. And I'd hate to chase this guy. <laughs> With the rebound, Connor. There's plenty of time left on the clock to take that shot. With a travel. First, first, there's a foul. A break for the Mox. Sham God's third. Jim, let me ask you a question what this household was probably like. <clears throat> the Wilkins family. Dominique played for Georgia. Play has resumed now in Syracuse. It's a five-point game. Carolina leads with 39 seconds. Let's go back to Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckner. North Carolina trying to advance to the final eight for the 18th time. 39.2 seconds remaining, and they're leading at 59 to 54. Carolina, they trailed by as many as seven at one time. However, they've kept their composure and fought their way back into this game, and they have the lead. They've done a very good job of doing that by staying aggressive offensively. They also have done a good job. They've rebounded the ball extremely well. We talked about how Cal is out rebounded their opponent by 11. Carolina is looking at a 38 to 38 rebound. And a whistle and foul inside as Duck raises his hands. 22.5 remaining. Carolina, you start to see the smiles on the floor from Williams and Jamison and also the kids on the bench. You saw Coach Dean Smith do, I mean, that's about as much emotion as you're going to see. Just a little shake of the fist just to kind of say, hey, job well done. He just kind of shook his fist to the guy saying, good job, because he knows this team had to fight back through a pretty adverse time the first 10 minutes of the second half. California really came out with a lot of spirit. Antoine Jamison, though, he also came out with spirit. 20 points, make it 21 to go along with eight rebounds. The difference was Carolina was able to establish some inside game, where Gonzalez never did anything inside for him, neither was Grisby able to. McQueen. Out of bounds. Off California. North Carolina, if this is a positive omen, it looks like it is. They have advanced to the Final Four in every odd year in the 1990s. Well, they still got a little ways to go, but I'll tell you, they've done a lot for themselves this afternoon, this evening, because I, I, they came out in the second half, and I thought they would have a real trouble kicking it up again. So in the final here in the East, Two of college basketball's truly great coaches, <laughs> Gene Smith and Denny Crum. Two Hall of Fame coaches. They've been to the Final Four as much as anybody in college basketball. These two coaches, you can see their wins right there. Dean Smith heads that. Denny Crum is third at 42. Eddie Cota, the freshman from Brooklyn. Five points, eight assists. Solid floor game. Very solid floor game. Big reason for Carolina to be here. Made pass. He found Jamerson inside. Here's Duck, and he'll lose control. That's your ball game. 3.4 to go. Carolina under Coach Smith. 
All set to advance to the Elite Eight for the 18th time. I'll tell you the other guy that played really well for North Carolina. And that was Vince Carter. And we didn't think, we weren't sure whether or not he would play because he had a, a, what they thought was a pool groin. But what happened was you, they couldn't guard him. They tried to guard him. Cal tried to guard him with Duck, and he's too big. He's got himself outside. His jump shot was falling. So he proved to be a significant matchup problem for uh, Cal as they tried to guard Vince Carter. Carter at the free throw line. 13 points now for... The sophomore from Armand Beach, California, Florida, rather. And he gets both. Largest lead of the game for North Carolina. However, this game, and the basket at the end will count. And the final score, North Carolina advancing to the Elite Eight. Well, since we were counting last week, let's count again. Dean Smith's 878th win and his fourth regional final title game this decade. What an accomplishment for the Dean. Let's go back to Birmingham, a minute 25 left of that game. Providence leads 66-53. Providence is on its way to playing for the Southeast Regional Championship. This game was tied at 51 with 7.55 remaining. And Providence with a 15-2 run, breaks away from the box. Moore with a three and a timeout. That cuts it to 10, 1.16 remaining. Only a 20-second timeout. Jim, we talked about Providence going to the Final Four twice, and we talked about that Billy Donovan team in 87. Ernie D's team back in 73. In one of the most, uh, when you start talking about dominating performances, they played against a great Maryland team. And Ernie D and Marvin Barnes, they just took over the ball game and blew Maryland out. Of course, went to the final four, lost in the opening round there. Pete Gilman's Providence Friars with upset specials over Marquette and Duke on the first weekend. They found themselves tied at 51 with eight minutes remaining and then went on a 15-2 run to break this open against the mocks of Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Sham God will go to the line for the Friars. Arizona with the win over Kansas tonight by three. The shocker. Mike Bibby had 21 points. A.J. Bramlett, 12 points, 12 rebounds. And a great defensive job on the interior. Well, Jim, a 14 still will not win a game in the NCAA tournament at this level, huh? Never been past this point. Uncharted territory. Cleveland State and Chattanooga, the only two to make it to the Sweet 16. Taylor hits a two, cut it to eight. No timeouts. And Taylor fouls Brown. Well, what really happened is almost three games here tonight. You had the beginning of this game where Providence and the Mox basically traded back and forth pretty well. Then Providence gets the lead, and all of a sudden they think it's Sunday in the park and went on a on a, a mind-boggling period of time where finally Pete Gillen had to call timeout and say, guys, what in the world are we doing out here? We were wondering the same thing. And all of a sudden got solid and Sham God just took over, Jim. He was an offense all to himself. They can't play as ragged as they did for a good part of this game and expect to advance past Arizona. You wouldn't think so, but that's why we're playing the games, yeah. you know what? <laughs> but not as crisp I, I, as, as Providence was against Duke. No, no. Now Brown at the lines, double bonus the rest of the way. He'll shoot two. No. And Brown, a very solid free throw shooter. Maybe not the 90% shooter that Crozier is, but uh, at 81-3, not bad. And did not have the big game tonight as he had against Duke. After 33 against the Blue Devils, Brown with eight against the Mox. That puts him up nine. Timeout. Timeout call. We'll be right back to Birmingham. Fifty-one seconds to go. There's only 
Nine teams remain alive in the tournament, one of them hanging on just barely. And that's Chattanooga, down nine. 48 seconds to go. Young penetrates, cuts it to seven. Jim, if you're down nine, three times three is nine. You've got to go for all threes. You can't afford to be going twos. Each team with one full timeout. More foul Sham God. Sham God going to go to the foul line. And Jim, you know, this this would provide a, a little or provoke a little bit of an argument. But when you start thinking about colleges that have had great guards, and this is certainly a kid that's got an opportunity. You're going to right? make a case for Providence. Yes, I am. Yeah. Jimmy Walker, Joe Hassett, Ernie D, uh, Ernie D, Johnny Egan, Billy Donovan, Lenny Wilkins, Eric Murdoch, Kevin Staken, and Vinnie Ernst. Now, that's some lineup, isn't it? You said Billy Donovan, too? Yeah, I said yeah. Billy Donovan. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Sham got a sophomore. Jimmy Walker. He sticks around for a couple more years. That's How about Sham got? This, as I said, this kid's got an opportunity to really be an outstanding player. 69-60. Inside 40 seconds. More outside. Young with the three. Down to six. Good idea. That, Jim, the possession where they went for the two, where Young went for the two, and I realize it's a reach, but when you're down nine, you got to be going for threes the rest of the way. Johnny Taylor thought that Brown had turned and uh, he'd picked his pocket, but he called the foul on Taylor, his fourth. 27.4 remaining, and Providence struggling all evening from the free throw line. 10 of 20 as a team. And, and your key guy is a 90% free throw shooter. He hasn't been on the line enough. And Brown, an 81% free throw shooter, can't hit him. I don't know what the rebound totals are, but they're probably going to shoot under 50% from the foul line and be out-rebounded and still win a ball game. They're being out-rebounded by seven. Isn't tonight. that amazing? That's a seven-point lead. Those kind of stats don't put you in a winning column very often in an NCAA tournament game. And Mims makes it a five-point game. Here's Crozier. And now, smart play here, because you get the ball to Crozier, who's a 90% free throw shooter, and that's who ought to be touching the ball the rest of the game. Crozier hit with his fourth foul with 10 minutes remaining in this game. He went to the bench with Providence trailing 45-42. When he returned, Providence was in front by seven. I was saying statistically a bizarre game. That's a storyline that's rather bizarre. That doesn't make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense at all. 90% on the season, but only uh, three out of five tonight. He'll shoot two. Boy, for kids that are watching, uh, you want to see a foul shooting technique. Steps up there the same every time. He made 57 in a row at one time in the season. He missed three tonight. Young. In and out. And rebound to Brown. And a steal. And a foul, maybe. Foul called against Murdoch with 4.6 seconds. All right, Jim. Guess not enough time. You make one, miss one. You, you, you gotta, you gotta try to miss the second one. Well, that's. Oh, they only, don't. They're not on line. Right, the sixth it, team foul. Right, so it, it wasn't a shooting, not a shooting foul. situation. Right. It wasn't a shooting foul. Taylor, three. No, Phillips yeah. tips. Rozier rebound and Providence. Congratulations to Mac McCarthy and their magical journey through this tournament to the Sweet 16. Well, that, that question you gave me about what conference has the best record in the tournament right now, Southern Conference finally gets eliminated. That's right. The back 10 does move to the top. Well, the final eight is set, and only one conference sent more than one team, and that is the Pac-10 with two. Arizona and Providence will be the last piece to the puzzle 
the Final Four puzzle on Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock Eastern time. And the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Johnny Taylor, closing out his career for the Mox with 22 points. And God sham God for the Friars with 15 points. And look at the assist turnover ratio tonight. So Providence, a number 10 seed, will take on a number four Sunday for the right to go to the Final Four. Pat O'Brien will be coming up next when we continue on the road to the Final Four. Providence is in the Elite Eight. First trip in 10 years since Rick Pitino took the Friars to the Final Four and standing by in Birmingham with Billy Packer and Pete Gill and Billy. Well, Pete, you're in an opportunity to go to the Final Four, one game away from it. It's like what you expected from the beginning of the year. Tell us about it. Not really, Billy. What are we doing here? We were like <laughs> non-nots the second half. We were so excited. We're thrilled we won, but I don't know how we did it. You know, uh, Jimmy and I are sitting over there. We're watching it, and all of a sudden we're saying, what do these guys think it is, the last game of Sunday afternoon? What do you turn around, call the 22nd? And what do you say to the guys? We're so excited, Billy. You know what I mean? We're trying so hard, and we're just going too fast. We're, you know what I mean? We just had to calm them down. We had to, you know, give them a little, you know, calm down, take it easy, relax. We're fine. It was just so juiced that couldn't talk to them. The huddle people were screaming. It was, uh, it was chaos. You know, maybe when we look through this stat sheet at the end of this basketball game, you guys get out-rebounded. You shoot it about 50% from the foul line, you know, and you come away with a winning game. What's the formula here? I don't know. I wish I knew. Uh, good Lord was with us today. Uh, they're heating up the bus. We're already packing the stuff. Let's go. We throw her out. But uh, we're thrilled with the win. we got a big challenge on Sunday, and uh, we'll try to have to, you know, get better, because uh, otherwise Arizona will kill us. I don't know about that. You've been saying those kind of things all the time, but I think you know you're going to be ready on Sunday. Well, good luck we'll to you. Nice Thanks, Billy. Good being with you. Live, this is Channel 12 News at 11. For the first time in 10 years, the BC Friars are going to the Elite Eight. All around southern New England, signs of support for the Friars as fans gather for the big game, and we have live team coverage. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen Adams. Friars fans around New England were glued to their television sets, waiting to see if Providence would make it into the Elite Eight. And sports anchor Joanne Marcino is here with us now. And now they're one game away from the Final Four. Can I mean, you believe this? <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> giddy. It just it does not stop at this point. The run continues. They win tonight. They beat Chattanooga 71-65. Jess Atkinson is down in Birmingham, Alabama. Jess, can you believe it? Joe, I tell you what, Karen had the, the exact phrase, waiting around to see if they would advance because for the longest time, you'd think they would. They had a 10-point lead, and all of a sudden, back comes the Mox, and it's all tied up. The Mox even took the lead, and then at the very end, it's just almost unexplainable because PC winds up running away with this thing. They have the six-point win. They are at Pete Gillen, and a couple of the players are in a press conference right now. Let me take you straight there, and we can give a listen. We was kind of in the slump, so, you know, I knew the best way to play is to try to push the ball like I was doing earlier in the game. And I just was lucky to find an open man and make baskets, make big baskets that we needed. And I just was looking to step up, you know, because everybody on our team could step up. You know, we got people on our team like Jason Murdoch that's, that don't never come here, but... He had big rebounds that helped me get the outlet to push the ball. You know, it wasn't for guys like him and Corey, you know, I wouldn't be able to do things I do because we would never get fast breaks. But it just went my way today, and I just thank God it just went my way and we won. Sham, over here, uh, how early in the game did you know that you could take pretty much any of their guards off the dribble, which you did basically the entire game? Well... It wasn't really about knowing. It's just that today, I, you know, I kind of felt good. You know, I was practicing all week with Coach and Coach Henry, you know, and shooting jump shots and shooting pull-ups. And then once my pull-ups start, start start to drop, then I know, you know, it's kind of hard to guard me if I'm shooting my jump shot real good. And today it was rolling, so I just kept attacking. Come back to me. We're going to go into the locker room a little bit later and bring it to you throughout this entire weekend because we are here, because PC's here. Who would have thought when you started all this off that, uh, that the Providence College Friars would actually be where they are now? They're enjoying every minute of it. One interesting note to end this, when they're playing well, when they're playing well, 
then it's the kind of thing where you're looking at it and you say, how long can they do this? How long can they stay in this tournament playing well? Tonight, they did not play well, and they still won. In that locker room, it is a feeling of, hey, we did what it took to win. Next up for the PC Friars is one heck of a good Arizona team. We'll see on Sunday. Live from Birmingham, Alabama, I'm Jess Atkinson. All right, thank you, Jess. Now from Alabama to the home of the Friars in Providence, our team coverage of tonight's game continues with Walt Pito, live with fan reaction. Walt? Yeah, they're really not that excited at all, Karen. Uh, I have a lot of good friends tonight here. Obviously, a very excited crowd. And watch them as they watch the first half. Let's go, Friars! By the sound of this lively bunch, you would know PC gets off to a slow start. So they add a little face paint to anyone, yes, anyone, who will sit still long enough. Is it true that some students can't spell PC? Or is that... Oh, what are you doing? Only URI students oh, can't spell Only PC. URI. And as it turns out, PC in shoe polish spells comeback. They always start off a little slow, but they'll pick it up towards the end of this half and about halfway through the second half. Mission to do the ritual on him. All right, uh, we, uh, we got the face paint on now. It's all over. We're, we're going to the show right now. Ten minutes into the game, and the PC lead is eight. The crowd on Eaton Street even louder. Even Michaela Carroll, who's a student at PC, but from Tennessee. Not necessarily a Tennessee Chattanooga fan. I'm obviously a Providence fan because I go to school here, and I'm psyched that they're up eight, and I hope they keep their butt. As the Friars start to clean up, so does Sarah Pruneau. What are you doing? I'm cleaning. You're cleaning already? It's not even halftime yet. <laughs> I don't want my parents to see a messy house with beers all over the place. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and at the half, her house is tidier, and the Friars mightier, leading by seven. You know, a seven-point lead is a good cushion going into halftime. Uh, it's good to see a local team good, doing so great, considering their PC and everything. Hopefully they'll carry through it to the second half. It'll be fantastic, let me tell you. And, of course, they uh, held on to that lead. In fact, I guess they increased that lead, and they're obviously very excited. And the word of the day, if you will, is... We are in the fatigable! Karen, I will uh, be swallowed by this crowd, and I think that's wise. Thank you, Walt Bisho, reporting live in Providence. And thanks to all those students for letting Walt be part of the party. And glad to see Sarah to be such a responsible yeah, adult out there. It's good to see Walt making friends. <laughs> yeah, Isn't you it? know, we need to put him with people like that. Now, <laughs> for the plays of this game, Joe is back to give us some highlights on that big game that they went We're going to give you some plays now, plenty more in sports, but we'll start you out easy right now with second half highlights. The Friars returned to the Sweet 16 last night for the first time in 10 years, and this morning, they're calling themselves elite. PC, the 10 seed, Chattanooga, the 14 seed, and your Friars running it up on the mocks in the second half. Austin Crozier was unbelievable. They needed to get him involved. He's getting others involved here to Jamel Thomas, to Jason Murdoch. PC, 42-35, and Chattanooga not backing down, though. Collier inside, up strong, and we're tied at 42. Johnny Taylor puts the mocks up on the next possession, and Chattanooga feeling good. A little early celebration, but God sham God, head and shoulders above the competition. They respect the dribble. He drops the three, or the J there, rather, and PC back on top, and that's where they stay. Sham to Jamel, 64-53 with 240 remaining, and Sham handling it the rest of the way. He goes to Murdoch, to Ruben Garces, and this is a nice finish here with two hands. Yep, PC, one game away from the final four in Indianapolis, 71-65, your final. We have plenty more for you coming up a little later in sports, Karen. You know, right at the end of the CBS Sports coverage, and they were doing the quick interview with Pete Gillett, he just <laughs> He was just a wreck. But I mean, I'm sure it is a very draining experience. Oh, but he was, he is, you know, and he speaks fast anyway, but he was really <laughs> wound up for this. But it really is exciting. Yeah. All right, thanks, Joe. Right, Big Karen. night tonight for Friars fans. Of course, stay with 12 News for complete coverage of PC's trip to the Elite Eight. And as Joe said, they will meet Arizona on Sunday. And that's a, you know, big upset tonight with Kansas being beaten and Arizona going into the Elite Eight and maybe. Maybe that'll look good for the Friars. So that, you know, I'm obsessed about talking about the game, and I'm not really interested in talking about the what? Actually, I just want to in inject here that, you know, anything can happen. Look at Kansas, by, lost by two or three points. Yeah. And anything can happen. Anything can happen. It was, you know, it is exciting. We get caught up in all that. 
This is such an accomplishment for the PC Friars because I, I don't know how much anybody thought they would do going into this tournament, but... Especially after going up and down throughout the season and yeah. finishing the regular season the way they did, but they certainly are rolling now, Karen. The PC Friars are now among college basketball's Elite Eight. They come into the NCAA tournament unranked as the 10 seed in the Southeast, and they tear it up, beating Marquette, Duke, and Chattanooga. Pete Gillen giving the Friars direction and God, Sham God going with it and taking them all the way. Sham a little inside and out move here. The pass to Derek Brown and PC on the board first. Sham getting his early as well. Watch him here with the handle. Watch him go behind the back. Continue in off the glass and PC up 6-2. Chattanooga's Johnny Taylor way up in the first half. Westmore delivers. And that's just plain nasty. Check out the replay here. Look how high he gets up. It's well placed. And that just hurts. Wow. Crozier concern there. They do it. Watch it. They get Crozier involved, though. Very comfortable from the top of the key. And PC up 31 24 at the half in the second. Crozier picks up right where he left off. As you'll see, he comes out and knuckles a three from the corner to get them started up in the second half. And your Friars running it up on the mocks. Crozier to Jamel Thomas will be the combination here. He goes to Jason Murdoch. And PC up 42-35. But Chattanooga not backing down. Marcus Collier inside. We will be tied up at 42. Johnny Taylor, the big man. Number 23 puts the mocks on the board and up. Next, on the next possession there in the bench, feeling good, God, Sham God, head and shoulders above the competition tonight, though, last night and tonight and this morning, and any time they respect the dribble, he drops the J, and PC back on top, and they stay there, Sham to Jamel, 64-53 with 2.40 remaining, Sham handling it the rest of the way, watch him go to Jason Murdoch, to Ruben Garces inside, a strong two-handed finish, yep, PC now one game away from the final four in Indianapolis, 70 61-65, the final. Today, I, you know, I kind of felt good. You know, I was practicing all week with Coach and Coach Henry, you know, and shooting jump shots and shooting pull-ups. And then once my pull-ups start, start, start to drop, then I know, you know, it's kind of hard to guard me if I'm shooting my jump shot real good. And today it was rolling, so I just kept attacking. When Austin got in foul trouble, we said, Sham, take over, and he, he took the ball, went one-on-one -on -one a lot, penetrated, gave it a Ruben, I think, for a dunk once. Hit a jump shot once, if I believe. You know, he was great. He just took the game over, my humble opinion, for about four minutes when we really needed him. And we got Austin back, you know, and Jamel made a couple of gigantic threes. So I think Shamgard was certainly a, uh, a great candidate for MVP of the game, in my opinion. The excitement has apparently boiled over. We have reports of riots in Providence. We're going to send it right out to Walt Butel right now. Walt. Well, uh, it is either a riot or a celebration, depending on how you look at it. We can take you down Eaton Street here, kind of at the bottom of Eaton Street. Uh, there are police right there and about 200 students in the street at one point, and you can hear some firecrackers going off right now. At one point, uh, students say they were sprayed with something, either pepper gas or, uh, or some, some sort of gas. One student said it was pepper gas, but... Uh, Obviously, at this point, police hoping that this will break up without any more problems. But uh, right now, the students obviously extremely excited. And again, uh, Joe, it is either a celebration or, as you put it, a riot, depending on how you look at it. But so far, no reports of serious injuries, although there are several students who did get sick from whatever uh, they were sprayed with. And at this point, police monitoring the situation. And you can see the uh, partying begins and continues here at PC. Obviously, police hoping they can get the students out of the streets safely. And we'll be monitoring this. We'll have more uh, tomorrow, I guess, or uh, I guess today. Later today, we'll have more, Joe. Right now, we'll send it back to you. Okay, Walt Buto reporting live for us. And, of course, the excitement about this game, PC yeah. going to lead eight and... Sometimes that can Nothing lead to wrong a little, little hearty celebration, but let's hope no one gets hurt. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't get out of control. We'll be right back.